After years of instability and endless crisis in our country, the cup of bitterness would be overwhelmed once and for all by the Kalis government or God's personal enemy, and the civil war would follow. Because in order to save the country from Kalis and his plans to rid it from Catholicism, a broad camp of Catholics and right-wing circles rose up against him to destroy his ideas. Sadly, we currently stand at a disadvantage in the civil war as the socialists are controlling all major weapons manufacturing centers. And there is a big possibility that they have more men in their army than we do. However, it isn't over just yet, because unlike our enemy, we have God on our side and we are on our way to secure foreign support from mainly the Russians and Italians. In addition, our anti kalis coalition is quite big, with plenty of groups joining our fight against him. So together with them, we will hopefully be able to win our anti kalis crusade before he grows too strong. And with Kalles also receiving international help from America and the British, we decided to conduct a risky offensive before any volunteers arrive. It is to split their territory in two. Now despite some resistance, using our most elite motorized anti-tank regiments, we broke through their hastily put together defenses and reached the Gulf of Mexico without any issues. So with their country now split in two, we must utilize this to our fullest extent before they plan any type of counter-attack. As a result of it, they had actually evacuated several troops from the area, allowing us to capture both San Luis Potosí, Monterrey and two other important cities in the area. However, we didn't stop there and followed the retreating government forces in the north to try and fully destroy them. This was actually more successful as we not only could encircle and destroy the division the most west, but also one that was protecting then leaving Chihuahua. And what's so great about the latter is that the division is the only light tank division in possession of the government. And so the north has been saved, but in the south things are harder, because it has turned into a battle of Europeans, not Mexicans. The Brits are also close to encircle three divisions whom we fortunately could save with a strategic counterattack. We used the momentum of the attack to continue south along the Mexican coast, with more important than the land gained led to the destruction of one British volunteer division. But much more importantly than that, the Russians have started entering Mexico City, and with our help the capital city was fully returned into the hands of our lord. And so, with the capital and all oil production complexes captured, Kales fled to Washington with his government quickly being overthrown and capitulating. Which means that our coalition against him stands victorious and stability has returned. Well, stability and stability, the only thing that is actually gone is our war. Because as Adolfo de la Huerta declared that democratic elections would take place and a new government created, almost none in the coalition supported him as the two biggest parties composing it, the conservative and moderate PAN and the synarchist extremist UNS, didn't wish for an election at all, instead wanting full control over the country. Which means Huerta is forced to surrender his intentions and instead choose one of the parties to stop our country from continuing its cycle of civil war. And after thinking for some time, he chose the less obvious choice, the UNS. Because unlike the moderates, he is certain that they will be strong enough to oppose all external enemies. And so the Union Nacional Sinarchista seized power and created a government of national unity to stabilize and rebuild our country. Because there isn't only political chaos, but also economic. So the work we have ahead of us is massive, and it will start with dealing with the leftists. Despite our stark ideological contrast, there is still some grounds where we can cooperate, mainly the economy. And regarding it, several radical measures have been planned, the first being the complete nationalization of the oil companies, mainly owned by British, American and Dutch companies. So while this might destroy our relations, it is not like we really care because the nationalization will provide us with enough funds to start walking towards prosperity. And if you think that there will be compensation for our nationalization, you are of course wrong. But that was all economic reforms for now, as we can't continue effectively without political strength and stability. Fortunately, our government has already started reintroducing the religious principles removed by Kales, even going as far as instituting Catholicism as the state religion and providing a lot, and I mean a lot, of resources to reconstruct the churches destroyed by Kales' government and his Sikh cronies.
But it wasn't only costly, because the church has a lot that it can provide us with. Not only have they been able to turn the trade unions to support us, but the education they provide us is also beneficial. And the best of all, especially for the legitimacy of the UNS among more moderate Catholics, is that the party has received papal support. And so we can at least temporarily return to the economic reforms and begin the process of national restoration. The first major act will be the railway expansion program to both employ unemployed Mexicans into construction works and improve our infrastructure. And the second will aim to establish land reforms. But with money rapidly running dry we need to find more. And the area with the most money is of course outside of Mexico. So we will reopen to international trade to start selling our resources. But not fully reopen as we can't let the money get stolen by foreigners like during the previous government. Therefore, partial autarky has been established. Moving back to politics, there is still a huge part of the population who see us as illegitimate, so it has become time to use more than just religion to legitimize us. And the easiest way will be to include the army as well. But we will also start to promote our ideology of synarchism, both through methods of propaganda and by introducing it to our society. For example, the idea of a merit system, where those most qualified and willing to sacrifice their own for the good of the nation and state will join the ruling class. And since nationalism is important in synarchism, we will also fuel it and strengthen everyone's Mexican identity. And this new wave of nationalism was enough for the UNS to secure full control and allow us to start transforming our country at a much faster rate. To not only build it up economically, but also build up its international standing. But economy was of course where we started as we already had started previously. And this previous start had actually created a boom in our industrial sector, with several new factories all throughout our country being opened up and a new economy starting to blossom up as an effect of that. But there are still several more things to do before it is perfect. And one of them is to start pulling up more oil and raw material from our earth as exports of these have proven successful. Closely linked to this, an industrial district was created in the previous Cristeros headquarters. And with this massive rise in resources, we loosened up our export policy even more, which resulted in our economy turning healthy for the first time in decades. Which means we are strong enough to begin fighting for our Mexican ambitions that extend outside of our borders. And we've already started expanding our army, as well as passing a law of obligatory service. However, a debate has started in parliament about what exactly it is we are seeking to do with our foreign policy. And after long discussions, it was decided that we would move to reform the Mexican empire. The Americans in the north will be destroyed, their influence over our country ended indefinitely, and Mexico's natural borders will be restored. But for an empire to exist, one needs an emperor. And fortunately we've already found one, the brother of the Kaiser of Austria and a relative to our former emperor. The UNS will of course stay in power, but the figurehead is now Maximiliano II. And due to his connections to Europe, we decided to ratify the tripartite pact, joining both Austria and France, but also Italy, one of the nations who have helped us the most. And while they are on the other side of the Atlantic, this alliance will greatly help both economically and more significantly militarily. We can for instance learn a lot from their doctrines and war schools, which together with our recent focus to create a new Mexican armed forces has created the perfect storm for the expansion of our army. We have even recently been able to greatly expand our arms manufacturing by allowing our arms company to export their products. The focus on our armed forces started with reconstructing the army. We began for instance upgrading to better equipment and develop our military strategies who will now focus heavily on mobile warfare after encouragement from our allies. Which means it's time to start the development of a Mexican tank. The last thing we did for now regarding our land forces was to restore the elite mountain infantry division, part of the army before the civil war. Because we must now switch to the air force and navy. Fortunately our air force has already started standing on its own legs as production of fighter aircrafts has already started, which leaves the navy left. But since our main enemy is the Americans, who have a navy that is probably 40 times bigger than ours, we don't expect to win any major battles. And therefore we won't invest any significant amount of resources and only focus on developing a submarine force as it is the most cost effective. But constructing more naval dockyards will still be necessary if we want enough submarines before the start of any wars. 
Well, wars that affect us in North America, because in Europe a massive war has started as the Germans declared war on the French. Honoring the tripartite pact, we joined the war despite our capabilities to participate being limited. But there are some islands in the Caribbean that we can try to seize, to at least weaken our enemies a tiny bit. However, with no naval superiority, all we can do is to wait for our first few submarines to be produced. Which will take so long that we can start looking elsewhere and begin the process of making our dream of a Mexican empire true. But to start, our army first needs to reach 1 million deployed men. Fortunately, the only thing standing in our way was our amount of guns, which we could easily start to produce more of. We then even had enough to create a new elite grouping of our army, the Legionnaires. And now with our army as strong as needed, we can start by sending an ultimatum to the British. Having recently joined the war against Germany on our side, we do expect them to accept giving British Honduras to us. Unfortunately, they refused, but not wanting to ridicule ourselves, we didn't care and simply seized the territory. Which means the British could declare war at us at any moment. So why not just start it ourselves, and we will have to do it one day nonetheless, since the Federation of Central America, who stand on our imperial lands, are allied with the British. But while we declared war on them and the whole Commonwealth of Nations, we made sure to announce that this was only an American war to not drag our European allies into a war with the British. We immediately crossed the border using mainly our motorized forces to attack as they would give us the fastest victory possible. And it was pretty fast as the Central American government wasn't ready for war, allowing us to move south through their country without meeting much resistance. It was only in Nicaragua that some defenses were prepared in the city of Managua, but at this point it was already over. And so only a month after the start of the war, all of Central America except the American controlled Panama lies in our hands. While the best thing right now would have been to start the conquest of the Caribbean, the British Navy is currently stopping it completely. Which means the only option that remains is attacking the United States of America, getting revenge for 1848. We prepared by deploying 16 port garrison divisions and trained the rest to at least a regular level. Unfortunately, we had to reduce our exports, which will of course reduce our income. However, it will leave us with enough resources to start the production of medium tanks. And even if the first tank division will be deployed in maybe more than a year, we declared war and started the most important war in Mexican history. And this war would start offensively, as it was the Americans who started the first battles. But being more than ready for this, we held them back at all instances and could even start our own counterattack, which sadly failed. But the plan is now to simply let the Americans bash their head against us until our tanks get deployed. But the war wasn't completely uneventful, at least not in the air of Panama where we shredded the outdated American Air Force. We also destroyed the first of probably many US naval invasions of our soil. While we did lose a small amount of land at one point, our tanks together with close air support planes have been deployed ready to push the Americans completely out of our own lands. And with already 2.5 million casualties on their side, God has already showed that he stands on the side of Mexico. Sus despojos y ascentes, más sus almas presentes en los puestos de lucha siempre está. Los caídos presentes, viva México, viva. Oh. 
While we have advanced a lot, it has been in the completely wrong direction, and with our forces a little too overstretched, the Americans have started a massive counterattack that could be breaking through in multiple areas. But all isn't lost, and we can actually use this to our advantage. Because they only have 2 to 3 million reserve manpower left. Which might sound like a lot, but with 6 million casualties already, we do actually have a chance to deplete the reserves. Fortunately, despite us running out of most types of equipment, the first wave was held back after which no more major attacks were staged. Which means that we won't deplete the reserves just now, but we have the time to re-equip our forces. During the time of waiting, we deflected and destroyed two US naval invasions quite swiftly, always thanks to our tanks. After waiting about a month, we were once again ready to attack, but this time instead of moving west, we will try to enter California despite its mountainous terrain. And for some reason, this is the perfect area since the American army has left parts of the front open. The offensive started with retaking Tijuana, which then opened the road into California. Using our mountaineers to hold the flank allowed our motorized and tanks to drive north as fast as possible. And with no significant US reinforcements arriving, Los Angeles was captured, and after encircling some of the forces defending Northern California, we arrived to San Francisco as well. So the Americans have now not only lost a huge chunk of their GDP, but also of their population, leaving them with less than 2 million reserves. And after a strange, desperate attack that only led to some victories, mainly in New Orleans, some of our spies put their available manpower at less than 1 million. Then, following some of our own minor attacks, we recaptured Denver and more useless offensives from the Americans. They might be under 500,000. And this trend of their declining manpower would continue, despite some of their offensives being fruitful. All the way until it had reached the point of no return. Zero manpower left. Which means every single soldier, brigade and division we defeat can't be replaced by new ones. And oh how many opportunities we have to defeat those. The first being in Missouri where our tanks and motorized exploited the fact that there couldn't be any reinforcements to encircle forces and reach all the way to Chicago, cutting the US in two. Even if all our claimed lands lie in the west, with most major American cities left being in the east, including their capital, this is where we will focus. and millions of casualties, the American army finally collapsed as we entered Washington DC. The following weeks we formally reintegrated all the former lands of the Mexican Empire, stretching from Panama to Oklahoma and California. In the rest of the US, four new synarchist republics were established, firmly under our control, but with American collaborationists at the helm. We also secured some islands in the Caribbean as the US Navy found itself in our hands. However, the US government still exists, exiled to Alaska, Hawaii and the Philippines, with their allies in South America still free from us. However, while none recognize our new lands and nations, the war is still officially over. Well, not the war against the British or the Germans, they still have to be defeated, as well as the Dominican Republic. And it all begins with defeating the Commonwealth of Canada, the only major nation left for us to defeat in North America. However, with them already having lost enough men to run out of manpower, this conflict won't be difficult. 
Our tank and motorized forces were quick to re-enter Toronto, but continued further inland this time until both Ottawa and Montreal were captured. However, due to issues in Quebec, we put our focus on the other side of Canada, starting by cutting the country in two with the capture of Winnipeg. This made capturing Vancouver much easier as we could encircle the city and then enter it from all sides. And with it fallen, the Canadians surrendered, leaving only the Caribbean left for us to secure. Here the Danish had nicely already defeated the Dominicans, so that we only had to defeat the Danish. Which was incredibly easy as we used our newly created marine divisions and got help from the previous US Navy. After all the Danish islands were cleared out, we turned to the British where we had to do proper naval invasions. But with the British Navy elsewhere and not many garrisons on each island, they were all easily captured. And so the Caribbean is ours and all our claims and ambitions have been achieved. And despite war still ongoing on all other continents, our new Mexican empire has brought peace and prosperity to North America. We truly stand as the strongest empire in the world and it's all thanks to the UNS and God. So thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.